your local battery expert. Right, it is eight minutes away from seven now. Are you worried about your kids' reading and writing skills? Worried that they're being taught in a strange way at school, that perhaps they're not understanding in the way that they should? Stats have consistently shown a decline in achievement for most year levels over the past few years here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. But if you were watching AM yesterday, you'd have seen the Education Minister make this bold claim. If you look at the likes of the Better Start Literacy Approach, uh, which is the structured literacy approach that we're rolling out with new entrants and uh, six-year-olds, we're having better results than we've ever seen before. In fact, I could have only dreamt of the results that we're, we're seeing at the moment when I was in the sector. Wow, sounds great, right? We asked for the stats to back this up. The minister told us she didn't have them to hand, but did have them. Well, I actually do. I just don't want to give you the exact results and get them wrong. So we followed up with Jantanetti's office and they gave us this, which is a rapid response from the Ministry of Education. So what happened yesterday, is, we understand, is that the Minister's office went to the Ministry to ask for some stats. Uh, it says here, following the Minister's discussion of the Better Start Literacy Approach on the AM show, the Minister's office have requested data on the programme to share with the host of the show. This is the data. And it is fascinating reading. So whether the minister had it or not or knew about it or not is besides the point because what is in here is quite significant. It talks about significantly accelerated growth in students' literacy skills compared to children who aren't using this programme. It says there are great benefits, particularly for Māori and Pacifica students. These are all fantastic things. Here to discuss, New Zealand Initiative Senior Fellow Michael Johnson joins us. Um, Michael, thank you for being with us this morning. Morena. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. For our new entrants, for our five and six-year-olds, do we currently measure how good they are at reading and writing? Not systematically, although, as you've seen in the, these data that have come through from uh, the Ministry, they are measuring it uh, for, for this program, this Better Start program. OK, so, but only for this program. For all the other students who aren't using this, do we know how well they are reading and writing? Not, not systematically, no. We, we haven't had any systematic measure in place for early primary since the national standards were abolished. And I have to say the national standards weren't a great measure either. They were pretty uh, inconsistent. OK. So well, we don't know particularly. Do, do we need a, a measure? Some kind I of I believe measure? we do. I, I, I think, you know, we need to be monitoring the system much more than we are at the moment. Yeah. How do we do that? Well, it's... It, there, there are tests like the PAT and ASTL, the, these tools that have been developed to measure uh, literacy and numeracy. The, the, at the very early stages, it's not so easy to measure uh, using tests, but there are other things like the progress and consistency tool that could be put into place for, for those very early years. This Better Start program, um, these numbers, and I've, I've forwarded you the Minister's um, data that she gave us, it sounds fantastic. It sounds really promising. Why isn't this program everywhere, every student doing it? Well, that would be my question too. I mean, we've known for at least 20 years that this kind of uh, approach works, the structured approach to, to teaching literacy. Uh, and so, you know, on one hand, I'm really pleased to see that it's being rolled out and that teachers can learn effective methods for teaching literacy. But... Why aren't we seeing it across the whole primary school? And my big question is, how are we going to embed it in teacher education and teacher training? Because every primary school teacher, not just for the first couple of years, should be hitting the ground in the classroom with knowledge of these methods well under their belt. What, is, what are these methods? What, what are they doing differently in programs like this that you said we've actually known about for a long time? Yes, well, the, the, the key thing is the phonological component, so teaching children the mappings between spelling and sound quite explicitly early on. If we do that, then children have access to about 70% of their oral vocabulary by sounding out words. That's in English. If they happen to be learning to read in Te Reo Māori, they have access to 100% because the mapping between spelling and sound is completely consistent. In English, it's about 70%. But it gives an enormous head start on, on learning to read if 
uh, having learned about 40 correspondences between spelling and sound, they're then able to decode about 70% of, the, of their oral vocabulary. So that, that's roughly it. Uh, there are other parts to structured learning and structured literacy, understanding cognitive load and how people get overwhelmed if you pre present them with too much at once. But th the essence of structured literacy at the beginning is that spelling sound mapping. I think I'm getting a, bit, a little bit overwhelmed and overloaded with too much information all at once. Can you give me an example, <laughs> um, Michael, of how you would teach a student to say a word differently between the two? You know, well, well, in the way that it's done here, how would you teach a child to say or spell dog, for example? OK, so you take the word dog. There are three phonemes or sounds in, in dog, d, a, g. Now, if, it, it, that's a, a very simple word, obviously, and there's just one uh, letter associated with each sound. And if they know the sound associated with each letter, then when they encounter the word, they can segment it into the three uh, letters and then associate the sound with each, and they get d, a, g. Then they have to blend it, d, a, g, dog, and then they can sound it out. Right. And similarly with, with other words. OK, so this um, data that we've been sent from the Minister, um, surely that would be um, cause to look at expanding this program kind of, well, as far and wide as you could? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and, and critically, how do we get it into what teachers, uh, new teachers learn when they're being trained? Michael, thank you very much for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. New Zealand Initiative Senior Fellow Michael Johnson with us from Wellington. It is uh, two minutes away from seven o'clock. How are we looking, Laura, on the issue of pack and save?